In this episode, I'm going to look at an FM transmitter that was uh, sent to me by the folks at banggood.com to uh, check out, test it out, and see what it does. And, um, well, let's take a look at this thing. It's an FM stereo transmitter. What more can I say? This is an FM transmitter that uh, was sent to me to evaluate and just test it out for the quality. Now, what one of these units is, I'm, I'm certainly not going to be uh, putting this thing into service. Um, when I test it, I'm only going to test it with that for an antenna because I don't really want this thing radiating out of signal. The claimed output power on this little transmitter, which they say is an FM stereo transmitter, the claimed output power is 5 watts. So, into a proper antenna, this would require a license to operate. This is the type of unit that you might find uh, like on a campus radio station or uh, sometimes the drive-in movie theaters, they would broadcast the soundtrack for the movie so that the people in the parking, you know, in the parking area watching the drive-in movie, if anybody, maybe some of you don't remember drive-in movie theaters because there's not too many of them around still. We have one that's out in the out in the valley out here. Yeah, probably a good, you know, hour drive from where I am or close to it, but in the summer months they put movies on a giant screen and they broadcast the sound over FM and they would use something like this, you know, a little, little low power five or ten watt transmitter. This is a five watt transmitter. We're gonna put this thing on a power meter and uh, see what it does. And uh, we're gonna take a look at it and I'm gonna see whether I can get any sound out of this thing here. Now, because I'm not going to be putting this thing onto an antenna, I'm not gonna have proper grounding. I'm probably gonna end up with lots of noise, just like I have with that little AM transmitter that I built. I'm gonna end up with all kinds of hums and so forth. Um, because I'm not intending, I'm not going to hook this thing up to an antenna and uh, and radiate out a signal. But five watts of power is into a good antenna. This could probably cover, you know, a small town. In fact, I guarantee you, something like this would cover a small town. It, it probably would cover, you know, a good ten miles easily if you had a half decent antenna. But we're not going to find that out. What we are going to do is I'm going to take this thing apart. And we're going to look at it. I'm going to plug it in. And I'm going to see if it actually uh, puts out a signal. And I'll plug it into a power meter, into a dummy load, and we'll measure the power. And that's all that I'm doing on this thing. Okay, let's take it apart and see what's inside this thing. So we'll just remove the screws from the back of it here. Okay, so the board's so that's all there is to it. Let's take a close look at uh, what some of the ICs are in here. So this is the unit. There's not a heck of a lot to it here. Looks like we've got our. Um, this is I'm going to say this is probably our, our phase lock loop to generate the frequency because it is connected to the display. And this IC over here is going to be our our FM modulator and oscillator, BH14. 15F. Let's look that IC up and see exactly what it is. And of course, that's exactly what it is. This is an FM stereo transmitter IC, and uh, so that's that's exactly what that is. What is this other IC that's in the background here? Can we see a number off of this one? I may have to get the microscope out to see that one. We'll look up what this one is. We'll look up both of them. Let me get the microscope going. What do you guys think? This is this is my uh, my latest little setup here. Is uh, that I had the magnifier, which uh, of course the light burned out on the magnifier that I was using. So I, I took the the magnifier off and I just attached with a couple of zip ties. I attached my microscope here. This is great. Now I can see that that IC is a Texas Instruments chip. It's an N5532. This is excellent. So let's look up an N5532 and uh, see what the heck that is. And that IC is a Texas Instruments chip. And what is it here? It's a looks to be a low noise, dual low noise, high speed audio operational amplifier. So that's the audio um, op amp that's going to drive the FM modulator. And this other chip that's down here, let's just take a look and see if we can get a number off of this one. It's an Atmel. So this is going to be it's an Atmega. That's what this is. I don't know if you guys can see it very well on the 
on the camera, but I can certainly see it here. Just adjust my light level on this thing. This little this little microscope has a has a light intensity and it makes a difference. It's an Atmel at Mega 48V 10AU. So it's a 1650A. So um, it's an Atmel at Mega 1650A. Let's look that up. It's an 8-bit AVR microcontroller. Yeah, we know that. That's going to be the uh, that's going to be your memory, and it'll have the it'll have the memory in it for the uh, you know for the the phase lock loop. And this is doing all your frequency generation. This is the phase lock loop that allows you to set the frequency. So that's pretty uh, pretty simple, and pretty standard. On the back side of this thing, there's a transistor, and the number on this transistor is a little spacer in there. I guess that's too. They didn't put heat sink compound on. What do you know? Let's see if I can see what this is. It's a C, a 2SC1971. Let's take a look at what a 2SC1971 is. It's an RF amplifier. Duh, we know that. It's a six watt RF amplifier. That's what that is. So what that means is that this unit will put out, you know, five watts, should put out five watts easily, as they claim. Although I think that probably it should be uh, heat synced, but you know what? I'm not too worried about that because I'm not going to be putting this thing into service. I just wanted to uh, try it out. Uh, I got it. I got it sent to me to uh, evaluate, and uh, that is all I'm doing. I'm just going to evaluate this thing, and we'll see if it works, and see if it actually puts out a stereo signal. And uh, then this thing is going to go back into the box and sit in storage somewhere. Uh, what I had originally intended was, uh, I was intending on getting a, a small uh, low power unit that I could use in the shop for, for testing uh, receivers. And I, if, if the sound quality is good enough on it, I might use it for that into something small like that that's not gonna have much range um, if it will work. But this might be a little bit too much power for um, doing that. But uh, I'll certainly uh, see, we'll take a measurement of the power and see if it's actually putting out the five watts that they claim. But I think that's probably gonna be a little bit too much power for what I need. Uh, something in the 100 milliwatt range will probably be more than enough for me. And I do have a kit coming. There's a kit being sent to me by one of the other suppliers, which is an FM stereo uh, transmitter kit. And it's probably gonna be what I'm gonna end up using because the one I'm using right now for my testing, it's uh, only putting out about two milliwatts. And while it's it's sitting literally five feet from me and the signal is noisy on every receiver that I test. So it's not, it's not putting out enough of a signal to really get good capture on most FM radios that I'm testing. Anyway, let's, um, let's see what this thing does. And I should point out that this actually, this transistor is pressed against the uh, heat sink quite good because I have to actually bend it down and uh, slide it in. So it is making a good uh, connection. There's just no thermal compound, although it's probably not going to produce much heat at the power level that they're running it at. But uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's plug this antenna in here and uh, we'll put power to it. I've set it for 87.5 already. Actually, that's what's what it started out at. But let's just see if I get a signal. Okay, so I'm, I'm getting a signal. Of course, it's going to hum. That's a given because I have no ground on this thing. But I want to see how the sound is. We'll just put some music on here. And... Uh, See if it plays. That right, does good. It doesn't sound like stereo, but the stereo lights on. It doesn't sound to be stereo, it sounds like mono. Interesting. I don't 
believe that's in stereo. Yeah. Now that hum is going to be normal because I got say no ground on this thing. Anymore. I'm almost tempted to. Uh, I'm almost tempted to extend this antenna and go out in my car and see how far this thing goes with just with this little antenna on it. I bet it would cover a couple blocks just sitting like this. To answer the question, is it stereo or not? I got a tone generator here. Let's just hook this thing up and we'll see. Do I get it out of one channel or both? Sounds like both channels to me. Should be on the left channel. Should be on the right channel. Okay, um, so we know it's not, it's, it's transmitting a stereo signal because the stereo light is on on the receiver, but the signal itself is actually not in stereo. Let's see if we can make it stereo. Because obviously, um, well, it's like it's kind of warm too. Hey, you wouldn't want to have this thing running without this case on. This case actually gets warm. Um, obviously, somewhere along the line here, they're, they're putting the two signals together probably at this microphone jack because it looks like the sound goes through this and uh, that's going back down to this 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 uh, op amp though so I can see the two uh, audio signals go in from the jack at the back here they go in here and here but they don't uh, I don't know whether where they come up here so we'll look up that chip again and get the pin out for it so that's a BA1415 see we can see the pin out that way I can um, See which are the left and right inputs. Okay, here we go. I have I have the pinout for the IC here on my Crackberry, and there it is. So if we look at this, we have our. Of course, it's going to rotate for me. Turn it upside down. Pin one is our right channel input, and pin two is our our pin twenty two is our left channel input. So, let's take a look here and see whether the two of them are actually bridged together. I bet you they are bridged somewhere. So here's our inputs down here. Pin 1 is on one side over here. Pin 22 is on the other. These should be our left and right inputs. And they come in through a couple capacitors that couple the signal. Looks like they come off the looks like they come off the back of this uh, uh, microphone connector. I wonder if that's where the two of them are bridged. Let's just uh, do some continuity measurements here and see what happens. I have to get my my magnifiers to see this because this is pretty small stuff. Okay, that is there. That one is there. Yeah, they are. They are definitely. Uh, here's our here's our inputs, right? Here's left and right. As you can see, they are bridged together somewhere. So what I'm curious is whether they're actually bridged at this input jack at the back, because uh, following the traces, if we look at the traces. Um, the two inputs, the left and right input, both go through the board here. They come through on this side, and you'll see both of those traces come right over to here. If I look on this side, these are the two traces that go right into the IC. So they're not even getting to the, the uh, microphone input, which it feeds back over to this op-amp IC. So somewhere they're being bridged. It might be... It might be the output of the op output of the op amp IC is bridging them, but somewhere somewhere we're bridged here, so that the two audio signals are bridging together. Or it could be at the jack here. You see, there are a couple connections that are actually bridged together. Those, those should be the switch when you plug it in. Those one should be like the speaker loop through. So that's probably not where the bridge is. Let's go through this together. We know that our signals going to the IC comes on on pin one and twenty two, and as you can see, our signals are not shorted together here nor are they shorted on 
the inputs to the capacitors here, the coupling capacitors. And those coupling capacitors go through to these coupling capacitors here, which go back to the audio inputs coming from the back. And as you can see, these ones are shorted. But on this side of the capacitor, heading towards the, the uh, IC, they're not. So these, these pins here are shorted, and they've got to be shorted back here closer to the audio output. So maybe they're bridged... Maybe they're bridged here at the jack or underneath the jack here. That might be what's happening. You know, that, that might be where they're bridged. I bet you they're bridged here where the mono signal comes in from, as you can see, those are bridged. If I look at the, the traces here, it looks like there's a signal that comes along from here, which is coming out of the mono output from the microphone IC, which is this guy here. As you can see, that, that one feeds out. And it feeds out on this trace here, which comes along, goes underneath the antenna jack, and it goes into here. And I bet you that's where they're bridged. I bet you the two of them are bridged together. And if I remove this solder bridge here, um, I wonder if that will, will fix it. And if you guys wonder why the lighting may look a little bit different, I've relocated some of my lighting. I've got my light bar directly above me, which is mounted to the ceiling, which is throwing a little light in from this direction. But I used to have a light that was firing light down uh, from in front of me but at an angle and I've since moved that light behind me down to try and eliminate some of the reflections that I've been getting so if it looks different that's the reason why we no longer have a short so, with a little bit of luck, this thing will produce stereo sound now. Let's see what it, whether it does. Plug that in there. Put the sound into the back here. And we'll plug in some power off its power adapter. Oh, better put an antenna on there first. Don't want to burn it up. Probably not very... The SWR is probably 100 to 1 as it is, so I don't think. Okay, let's see whether I get from my tone generator. Let's see if we get a left and a right channel now. I do believe I hear a right channel and a left channel. Let's see what music sounds like on it now. Oh yeah. Even with all the hum I can hear in the stereo. Mono. Okay, now it's transmitting in stereo. Okay, as you can see, into the power meter, this unit is putting out exactly 4 watts. So, into a proper antenna, this thing would actually have quite a bit of range, I would think. I'm not going to put it into an antenna. We're putting it into a dummy load just for testing. But this little unit does have enough power that it could probably you know, cover a campus quite easily, possibly even a small town. So here's the setup I'm going to use. I'm just going to use this whip antenna and I'm going to take a drive in my car and see how far this thing goes. I'm imagining it, it might go a block or so with this, but I had to retune to 87.7. I had it on 87.5. I had to retune it to 87.7 because I just realized that my car doesn't tune any lower than that. So I'm going to take a drive and we're going to see how far this ridiculous little thing will go using this little short antenna and uh, and then I'll, I'll record some shots I'll record it in my car dash cam I'm not taking this one with me but I'll record it in my dash cam I've got a shot of the power meter so we know this thing is actually putting out I think it was around 4 watts that's what it actually is putting out into a dummy load so um, we'll see what 4 watts into this little antenna will do I would imagine it's going to give me a block or two probably but uh, that's even at that it's too far for what I wanted but let's try it out and see 
Okay, I'm about a block. And it's there. We'll head away from my place. I got my levels too high as well. The thing is, anybody who's uh, ever set up a transmitter knows you you have to you have to have proper equalization. You need limiting. You need to cut out all the high frequencies. You have to you have to have what's called a brick wall filter to eliminate everything above about 15 kilohertz. Otherwise, you could end up with uh, high frequency components. Beating with your, uh, beating with your, uh, your pilot tone. So I wouldn't expect the thing's gonna sound like a radio station, but uh, I'm just curious as to how far this thing will go using that antenna that I showed you. All I've done is that little antenna, that little telescopic antenna. I've just extended that to its length. So we're not talking a tuned antenna by any stretch of the imagination and that's why there's so much hum and stuff in the background is well it's, it's putting out five watts of rf and that five watts of rf is getting right back into the transmitter and getting into the audio feed and everything and making it sound horrible so don't take this as a representation of how good this thing can probably sound because i have a feeling it probably can sound very good if someone used a proper external antenna and proper grounding and they they put it through, they process the audio correctly, uh, use limiters and so forth on it to make the audio signal correct. But to, this is just to see how far this thing will work. And I'm, I'm approaching about one kilometer, which is quite surprising that it's gone as far as it has. When I get to this traffic light here, I'll be about one kilometer from my uh, home. As you can see, that as you can hear, the signal, as weak as it is, it's still hanging in there. It's not going to go much further than this. So. so there you have it. I got about one kilometer of range using that little whip antenna, which is a lot more than I really need because I was just looking for something to basically broadcast around the property for testing radios out but if you get one of these units remember you're going to have to pull it apart and you're going to have to take those solder bridges off of that uh, rear connector because that is going to bridge the audio to mono the reason they've done it is so that the mic is live when there's external audio plugged in that's why they did it like that which is you know it's no good that's got to go anyway if you're looking for one of these things if this was put into a half decent antenna you could probably get 10 or 15 miles out of it it's amazing how far uh, fm will go line of sight if you're looking for one of these units you can get them through banggood.com again you're on your own this is a device that would require a license before you put it on the air so anybody who's getting one of these things and they're going to put it on the air without the license you could face the consequences from the man we'll catch you in the next one